Today we're going to be showing you how to upgrade this stereo. This is a Toyota Camry 2005-2006 model. So with this style dash. Now there was a couple of different head units in this new model, but we're going to show you how to pull it out and how to upgrade it. We're going to be using the Kenwood DDX 917 widescreen Toyota unit because that's 200 millimeters, 200 millimeter wide unit with the rounded edges. It's going to suit this perfectly. So let's show you how to do that. Your first step is going to be to take this non-marring pry bar. We do have these available now on our website from carboncarsystems.com.au and they are plastic so that they don't scratch anything. Uh, and you can just simply pry these from behind the head unit and you're not really going to damage anything. You just uh, be careful not to lever too hard off these dashes, but very, very easy to pull that forward. Now behind here, uh, we're going to unplug this plug right here. Okay, it's gonna have a little section, a little locking clip underneath it. So we're just gonna push that and unlock that one. Then around this side, you're gonna have the clock and you're gonna do the same thing as a little locking tab on the right hand side of that and unplug that. All right, so once you've actually pulled the air vents out, now there is four 10 millimeter bolts around the edges, okay? So there's one here, there's one up the top here. So there's one there, one here, and one down this corner here as well. And then once you pull that out, we're gonna undo those quickly. So it's a bit hard to film and undo them with one hand, but I'm just gonna do that off camera. But also before you pull this unit out, like always, make sure you open it up, check there's no CDs in, because once you get it out, you can no longer do that. So very easy, I'll quickly undo those. So once you have undone those, all you're gonna do is lift it straight out and pull it out. Careful not to scratch your dash. So we're gonna sit this on our knee. And here we go, we gotta unplug all these. So every single one of these plugs will have a locking tab on it. And we're gonna tell you what each one of those things does as we move along. And we're gonna be adding a reverse terminal to this car as well. So we're gonna show you how to wire that up. We're just gonna unplug all these now. I'm gonna, very hard one hand, so we're just gonna quickly undo all of those. But they all got locking tabs on them, so be aware that, see on the top of them here? Okay, you can see there's a locking tab and you go through them one by one. So there we go guys, we're out on the bench, we have the unit out and we're gonna actually just move the brackets over quickly to this new unit. So this is the Kenwood DDX 917 widescreen. It is only available in the Asian Pacific market, so Australia and Australasia and areas like that. It is a really cool unit because it's built for Toyotas. It comes with the plugs, so they're the power plugs already on, ready for the Kenwood and ready for Toyota. Um, so it is a really cool unit for anyone with these 2005 onward sort of Toyotas. Comes with a GPS receiver. Um, it's got Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, dual USB. So you got two USB functions in here. You also have a video input adapter if you want to run things like an older PlayStation or video source. External microphone for clear talking. And on some of those vehicles that have steering wheel controls, you have this adapter. Now, this is a 28 pin adapter, so it only suits newer model Toyotas, but uh, we can actually customize that to suit some of the older models. And when we put this kit up on our website, we're gonna put it with this unit for the Camry and we'll put it up there with the correct steering wheel controls uh, interface if you need it. Because it's all built in, so you actually don't need to buy a separate interface when you're buying the Kenwood units. That's what makes them really, really good. So this is the unit here. I'm gonna quickly pull that out and we'll swap the brackets over. All right, guys, found myself a tripod. So we can actually show you this as we go along. Here's how the units come. They come nice and neatly packed. We're just gonna move that out of the way. All right, so we're just gonna undo this completely out of the wrapping. These are great because they actually come with uh, protective uh, plastic over the screen, so you can actually pull that off as well. Um, if you're a little bit unsure about your fitting, you can leave that on until the very end. I find it a lot easier to do this straight away. And there you have it, that's the widescreen unit. Very nice looking unit, as you can see there. 200 millimeters wide for the touch panel down the side. And it actually flips down, it's got CD, DVD behind it. So, if we put these next to each other, you can actually see, perfectly fitted, but a really nice upgrade in there. Really affordable. Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, Bluetooth, Spotify, everything you're really gonna need. And the quickest way to change them over is just sit them alongside each other. And because they're built for Toyota, as you can see here, the brackets are actually gonna suit exactly in the same holes. You can actually just move them down directly. So put them vertically above each other. They're an eight millimeter bolt, four bolts, or a screw. 
if you are going to use a Phillips head screwdriver, just make sure you don't thread them. So, just undo these quickly. You can actually use the original screws, but uh, they also give you some in the packet. And there you go. That will sit up perfectly into the holes. Flip that over, we'll do the other side. There you go, brackets all done, ready to go in. So now we're gonna move up. We need to run the microphone. We're gonna mount the microphone up behind the rear vision mirror up the top here. And we're gonna run across through the hood lining, down the A-pillar and across into the center. Uh, we're gonna show you the easiest way to do that. And it's actually to pull this panel off, the driver's side panel. Uh, we've already run a reverse camera from the rear to the front. We're gonna run that across at the same time. Um, it's quite easy to get off. You wanna pull off this tread plate. So first of all, use a, the pry bar that you've got and you can actually just lift that up. That will pop off. You can actually take it all the way off if you need to take it all the way off. And then down, we're gonna take the, the kick panel off in the, the bottom right hand corner. There's just a little lug and I'll undo it. You just anti-clockwise spin it. If your fingers, it's not gonna be that tight. Just a little plastic lug, that's all it is. And just anti-clockwise and when you put it back on, you just press it on, they're really easy. Um, so just anti-clockwise undo and then pull the kick panel off. You put your hand underneath that and pull that off. Now make sure you get both these clips. This clip here can sometimes sit in the, the panel that's already in the car. So you can actually pull that out of the car and put it back on there before you push it back on. And that, that will press on horizontally as you put it back into the kick panel. And you'll locate this little lug will go onto the screw screw hole or the, you know, the, the bolt hole that's on the back and that presses on. So that'll give you an idea of what it looks like in that kick panel. It should sit like that, very, very simple and easy to do. Once you get that off, you will need a 10 mil. There's a 10 millimeter bolt just here in the bottom right. And that's what's behind the, uh, the kick panel. And that's what we need to undo. So we're gonna undo that quickly. And then on the left-hand side of the steering column, on the same panel, there is a Phillips head screw. And I'll grab that and I'll show it to you. I'm gonna show you on the camera here. So as we come under, on the left-hand side, there's this little cover. I'm gonna pop that off of our pry bar again. And there's a little Phillips head screw there, okay? and we're going to undo that. Once you've undone that, the panel will virtually come off. You can actually just pull on it. And if it's a bit tight, so we'll see if we can pull this panel off from this side. This side's a lot easier, so just going to pull that forward. Very easy to get off. Now, the left-hand side can be a little bit tricky. Again, easiest way is just use that pry bar and push it in between, and you can leave it forward, and that will pull off. So. It's very hard with one hand, but uh, I'm going to pass this back. And I'll show you. There you go. So that's very easy to pull forward. Now you can undo that panel completely, but I find it easy just to sit it there. And once we've done that, we can run our microphone and our reverse camera, if you've got one, really easily. We can run it down the A-pillar and across. You can tie it up with these looms and you just pass it up into the center console. So I'll quickly show you that because it doesn't take that long. So we're just gonna undo this microphone and literally this is gonna be the hardest part of it, but it's important that you run this external mic because it's gonna give you a crystal clear phone calls um, using this noise cancelling external mic that comes with the, the Kenwood unit. So just take the double side tape off. Yeah. Mount it up in the center. And the reason we mount it up in the center, it's away from the windows and both passenger and driver can talk. You pull off this pinch weld, which is easy to get off. You just pull it off, it's designed to, then pull out on the A-pillar. Now you can actually pull that right out if you want to, if it makes your life easier, but we're gonna leave it in today. And we're gonna loop this up behind the roof trim, as you can see there, and we tuck that up nice and neat. And these, these are pretty flexible. You can actually pull them down without damaging them. And there we go, that's nice and neat. 
microphone's in the center. Once we've gone around the roof lining, we can actually push that back on. So just have a look here. Line it up. And there she goes, push that back on. There we go. Back into place, very easy to do. And we have our mic and our reverse camera and we can run it down this pinch well. And all designed to clip back on. Let's undo this cable as we go. And you can tape these up if you want to tape them up, make it a little bit neater. But this is all going to hold it in place and it'll never come off, so. Now, some of you guys, I like to undo this bolt. There's another bolt here with another panel. So I like to put my cables behind it. You can go down the front of it if you'd like to go down the front of it. Personally, I just think it's a little bit neater if we just quickly undo this. You've already got your 10 mil socket. Quickly undo that, and then we can pull it forward, run the cables up under it, and that's gonna sit nice and neat, and it's gonna hold our cables in place. So, there we go. All right, as you can see there, it's actually pulled them nicely into place. And put all that pinch rod on, and that's not gonna be an issue. Now, when you, if you do that, Make sure you got them up and out of the way of the bolt when you tighten it back up. You don't want to be jamming your cables in that bolt section because you can damage them, obviously. Okay, very easy to do. Now, we're going to run these across. And because that holds it nice and neat, we didn't put any tape on it because it's never going to come off again. But we are going to tape it from here across just because it can sit down in your feet. So going to limit with other cables you can use cable ties tape whatever you want again we use test tape in all our videos which is like a factory cloth tape it is a little bit more expensive than say a normal electrical cloth tape or plastic and abs tape but it's nice and neat so a normal tape costs about a dollar this is about five to seven dollars five to ten dollars depending where you buy it from There's a nice little clip we can go in with that. It's going to hold it in place. Tape it on the left-hand side there. And then we're going to pass that up into the center. There we go. So that's our reverse camera and our mic being run. Then we just need to put this panel back on. Now, just going to make sure you lift it right up and over the top of the steering shroud there and push them on straight. You're gonna locate these little yellow tabs. You can come in there, Colin. This little yellow tab will go, in, go into these holes. And if you get them in place, it will just clip on properly. Excuse my head. There we go. Same on the left-hand side. Yellow tabs. There you go. That is back in. And now we're gonna do the bolts up, put the screw in, put the kick panel on press the tread plate back on and we're back in the center. I'm gonna show you some wiring on the bench quickly on how to do the steering wheel control harness because we do want these factory steering wheel controls to work and we do have to modify it from a 28 pin to a 48, uh, 24 pin. Uh, we're gonna show you how to do that but uh, if, again, if you're buying it from us, uh, we'll have this prefabbed for you, ready to go and it'll be as simple as mounting up the unit, running the microphone, plug it in, really easy to do. All right, let us just do that quickly and we'll get you going. Now I'm gonna show you something really cool this is the way to wire the steering wheel controls from the built-in Kenwood without buying any extra steering wheel control interfaces. Now in Australia, these are steering wheel control interfaces are about $100, but the, uh, you know, the Kenwood DDX 917 has programmable steering wheel controls built in, right? And it comes with this plug for the Toyota in the 917. Now, like I mentioned, that's a 28 pin plug. On this Camry, it is actually a 20 pin plug. So I think I said 24 pin in the last section of the video but it is actually a 20 pin plug. And here's a tip, you can go to the Kenwood website, direct OEM steering remote function interface. You can Google that. So hang on, I'll move the camera up. You can actually see that there. There we go. Direct OEM steering wheel remote function. Brings up all these diagrams. Toyota 20 pin diagram, okay? There's a 28 pin, which is already pre-done for you. There's also a 26 pin for some of the Toyotas. But this Camry 2005, 2006 is actually gonna use that 20 pin. Now, what we do is we actually get a 20 pin harness. And if you order from us for this car, we have them on our website specific for the Toyota Camry with a picture on there so you know what you're buying. And we're gonna do this for you.
but if you're at home and you've already bought this kit and want to do it yourself, you can also do that. What we're going to do is we're going to unpin this factory harness. Now, I'm going to try and make this as easy as possible. We're going to use a little pick or a little screwdriver you can buy from anywhere. You've got to pop this section up. Now, let me see if we can do it on the video quickly for you. There we go, there's one side, two sides. Now, the way that does, there's two little tabs you can pick it up. I'm using a bit of a wide flat bait. It's probably a little bit too wide for what we wanna do. You see them there, here, and here. Pop it up, you don't wanna pop it all the way out, just a fraction up, and then you can actually de-pin these plugs. You can pull on them, and they'll come out. All right, so you can pull all three out. So you can keep that if you wanna keep that but that's gonna give us some pins and we're gonna reuse them on the 20 pin plug. Now you can get this loom from us, which is similar, and this is for a later model vehicle like this. Uh, but uh, the 28 pins is typically on some of the newer vehicles. Uh, whereas in being a brand new unit, they give you the latest, uh, latest plugs. But this is for the older vehicles like the 2005s, 2010 vehicle Toyotas. And again, we're gonna loom, pop this up a bit we're gonna de-pin this plug, so you can see there. Now, this has got a lot of other harnesses on here. You can actually get this from us, you can buy it directly if you wanted to, but like I said, if you buy the unit from us, we're gonna do all the hard work for you. Get rid of all this excess stuff, you're not gonna use it, get it out of your way if you don't want it. It's not gonna be used, this purple white wire on some of the later models is a speed sense wire, and it's gonna be in that pin, but we're not gonna use that today, so we can actually just pull that out, get rid of that. Then we have these three here. So, now, when you're looking at the plug that's on the website. So if we're gonna move that up for you and have a look. This is the back side of the male connector and we're looking at the female connector. So you gotta think that is actually plugging in this way and that's how it's looking at it, all right? So you've got these three in the top left, lines up the three in the top right. So that means we're gonna go gray, green, purple is gonna be the way it is gonna go into this plug, all right? So gray, green, purple, two pins in up the top. So I'm gonna pull them out because we can remember that. So I'm just gonna use this to make my life easier. Actually, I've accidentally squashed down the plug. Put that back open. I'm gonna pull that out. Here we are. So we're gonna show you the pinning in and trying to do this video a little bit better. So we did cut it there. Now, as you can see on that picture, like I said, that's the male version plugging in. So the plug will clip into the top. So. As you can see on the picture there, if we zoom in a little bit, I'll show you that. Here we go. Let me just move this up a little bit. You can see it's on the top three in the top left-hand corner there. It's the three in the top left. So let's zoom this back out. We're going to try and pin that in for you. So you've got purple on the left. So it's going to sit like this, okay? So purple on the third one in. We're going to slide that in with the flat of it on the bottom. So you can see if you look in the front, the, the bigger holes are on the bottom. So as we slide that in, you make sure they're facing down and that will clip in. And you're gonna make sure it comes through on the end. So you can see it all the way through. Then we've got the green one is the next in line. And slid in. And then we're gonna do the gray one, okay? So this one's a little bit funny uh, for some reason. There we go. On it. So as you can see, you see there, it's not pushed all the way through. So if it's not pushed all the way through, just pull it out and try and push it in again. Or you can try and use a little bit of the, uh, the, the clip that you use, sorry, the pick that you use to push it in. So maybe it just needs a little bit of a push. So there you go. You can actually see it coming out. You're gonna push the cables, be sure not to damage them. All right, so there it is there. And there's your three pins, okay? So once they're in all the way, you're gonna press this top bit down, that will lock it back into place, okay? So there we go, we've got the purple, green, and gray, as per the diagram, that will plug in next to the other one, and that will do our steering wheel control. So pretty easy. Like I said, if you're getting the units from us, and it's for this model, we have them on our website specific for that model as we advertise them, so we'll pre-do that for you, but not too hard to do as well. Second part of this, we have this loom here. This is already the main power harnesses. Sorry, just bumped the camera. The main power hum harnesses and the speaker harnesses already done. But the other thing we're gonna do, this light green wire, 
meant to go to the handbrake. Now we're just gonna cut that off. We're gonna solder that directly to the black wire so he can actually use the functions while driving. So now those functions, like this would lock out typically some of the DVD functions, some of the options that you can only use them while you're actually parked with the handbrake up. Now, this is designed so you can bypass it and it's for safety reasons, but your passenger can actually use that. So we're gonna solder that onto the earth, which is just simulating the handbrake on all the time. Then you can use the DVD and all the functions while you're driving or your passenger can, okay? So, and this one here is just going to our reverse. So this is just gonna trigger our reverse camera to flip over on the screen. We've already run the camera. We're gonna show you that in the car. We're gonna solder this onto the black wire. Pretty easy. Okay, last stages of the install. We're actually gonna get these harnesses out. Now that we've uh, wired that all up, they're just gonna plug straight in. There's only a couple of plugs that it will work on. So one is the rear speakers, one is the front speakers and the main powers. And we also have the 20 pin plug that we just showed you how to make. So that's the steering wheel controls, okay? The other stuff here is not gonna be used. That's just for the old head unit. You will use this, which is the antenna, AM, FM antenna, and everything we've run through. Now, this car, we've actually run this camera up the top here. You might not be able to see it behind the mirror there, but this is the DRVN uh, 520. This is the dash camera that actually plugs into the Kenwood system. So we actually ran that as well. We ran it around the passenger A pillar, and here's the loom for it. Now, the cool thing about these DR, the DDX 917s is that they actually will take this dash camera in, and it's just a simple wiring. So you've just got yellow, red, and black, and that just goes to the yellow, red, and black on the power harness here. And then you have two plugs, which will go into the back of the head unit. Now, we're gonna unplug this from the power while we solder. We're gonna solder this on just to make sure we're not gonna get, because these were short, and it's easier for us to just strip them all and solder them all at once. So we're quickly gonna do that. So you just strip them back. We're gonna wire them up and then we're gonna tape it up nice and neat and solder it, okay? So you can use some quick crimps, but we suggest soldering. It's gonna be a lot more lasting, better connection, and a lot neater as well. Now the reason we do it on this part is you can always return that back to normal on the factory side of the car. So here we go. Quickly solder it up. This is the uh, battery powered soldering iron for anyone that's wondering. If you're gonna solder in a car and you're not very experienced, best to lay something down first just so you don't drip any solder anywhere. All right, so as this heats up, set the solder it quickly. Take them individually, make sure you feel them. There's no sharp bits sticking out if you're gonna do it this way. Now you don't have to get this DRVN, it's an optional extra. It's a HD dash camera, so it'll monitor everything you have in the front of the vehicle. And we do have to do one more. So this is the reverse camera we've run from the rear. We're gonna hook that straight to the purple white wire. So we can cut that off now. Really easy, get rid of that. And we have a red trigger, which is just basically the power from the reverse light. So we've run this at the back. You can watch how to do a reverse camera on another video. We have tons of the videos on our YouTube channel, Carbon Car Systems. So the power from the reverse lights, which will go to the head unit, and that will tell the head unit to flick over whenever the car is in reverse. Pretty simple to do. Again, we're gonna solder that up. Nice and neat. Just seconds to heat up. And there you have it. Now, what we're quickly gonna do is we're gonna loom this so it's nice and neat, get some wires out of our way, ready to go. We're gonna tape it up. You don't have to do this, but it's obviously uh, anything you do to make your need to, need to work is always gonna look good. So it's gonna be straight into our reverse now. And we're gonna tape these up a little bit. Saves people pulling on things, yanking on things, having things come loose. All right, so now we're gonna plug those back in now. 
That's nice and neat. So we've got our reverse cam, our dash cam, our reverse cam information wires that will plug into the back of the cam wood. So there are those three wires. I'm gonna tape those together as well, just so they're nice and neat. Then we have our microphone coming in. Steering wheel controls are there. We have excess, excess cable here from the actual dash camera. So we're just gonna wind that up, shorten it up just so it's not so messy. You gotta bundle them. Just be careful not to do them too tight so they don't break any cables, but it's not gonna be an issue. They're pretty flexible. And again, the reverse camera, we have some extra cable. So we're gonna bundle that out of the way. All right, now we have three last cables to do, which are very, very easy. We have two USBs coming out of the rear of the unit. So you have a gray one and a black one. So this is on the Kenwood units. They have two USBs. Some units will only have one USB if you're using a different brand. Um, one is gonna be for Android Auto and one's gonna be for Apple CarPlay. Black is for Apple CarPlay. It will do Android Auto as well. So we're gonna run this on the driver's side of the dash for this gentleman. You can mount them anywhere. You can buy special switches and mounts and whatever you like. But if you do, don't get too far extensions because uh, you don't want too much length on them. Um, because Apple CarPlay is very, very susceptible to current drop. So we're gonna run this around the driver's side here very easily and we're going to mount it at this customer's request under the panel on the center console here and out the bottom right so he now has a cable here no holes drilled he can plug his apple phone in there and mount it in the center of the car so that's very easy for him and then on the left hand side we're actually going to do the android version so you get actually just pass your hand up it's very easy to do there we go so there's the Android version, very simple, and he has that on his left-hand side. That can be used for a spare USB. Um, you can tuck these up nice and neat. If you're gonna do this, be sure not to put them near your feet when driving. So we're gonna have them on either side there. Now, all that we're left to do is do all the plugging in, and we have this GPS receiver. So this GPS receiver is just gonna stick on top of the unit as we're putting it in, and it plugs in the back. So I'm gonna show you that as we go. Now. The only thing you have to be aware of on these Kenwoods is you have the gray and black. They're color for color. So like I said, make sure you use the black one for Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. One says front camera, one says rear camera, and then you have a video out. So we're gonna use front and rear camera. Just make sure you get them around the right way if you are using uh, you know, the dash camera. So we have the rear camera here, front camera here. They're the only confusing ones because they're the same color and as we do in all our videos, we're going to tape these together. So when we put it back in the dash, it's not going to come undone. That also insulates that little bit of black, but it's, uh, that's an earth, so it's not going to do anything. It should be fine. And as we go through, we just plug everything in now. And everything really only goes in one location. You got your AM, FM antenna. You have your steering wheel remotes, which is going to go into the back for a remote in. It is slightly larger than the microphone one, so you can't actually get those jacks wrong. The jack for the microphone is 2.5 mil. The other one is actually 3.5 mil. Got your black and your gray, USBs. Mount them up. And we're gonna tape those. Very simple. Then we have the power harness. Oh, oh that was steering wheel control, just a bit length there. Uh, we have the power harness here, which is the main one. Gonna go in, only going one way. We also have dash cam and the dash cam controller. It's gonna plug in as well. And as I mentioned, we're gonna run a GPS here as well. So here we go. GPS, we're gonna undo the tape on the back of that. And you can just stick it on the top of the unit because it's gonna have clear line of sight straight to the sky. As we plug these in and mount these up, be careful not to scratch your dash lift these two clips in that we undo or the two plugs that we undid from the original paneling and make sure you got all the cables out of the way and they'll just tuck in behind nice and neat two cables up all right then we have it so that's the positioning for it it's going to line it up and that is easy enough to bolt up now so the next step we're going to have here 
It's actually just to test the unit. So we have to quickly grab the keys and I suggest testing it before you bolt it all up to make sure it all works. All right, so we found the keys. We are now gonna show you a couple of settings you're gonna set up and how to do the steering wheel remote controls. They're very, very easy to program. So just a quick look, there's our dash camera from the left hand side. It's actually powered up off the unit now. Pretty small, pretty cool. Got the microphone up there, we did. All right, when this comes up and loads, you wanna turn the demo mode off. You wanna go into cameras. If you have a reverse camera, you wanna turn reverse cam interruption on. You can leave parking lights on or off, set them up to be specific for your car. Now, if you have the dash camera, you wanna go dashboard camera. And you wanna turn this on as well, okay? So that's on now. And you can change displays, language, and a few other things, but uh, we're pretty well done on that one. Oh, there's the finish button up the top right there. Now, this is an automatic message. You can have it turn off after 10 seconds. It's just use the system safely. There is a feature on this called gestures. So if you swipe on the screen, left, right, vertically, it actually does change things on the unit. It can be a little bit frustrating. That's that beep you're sort of hearing. So you want to go into your settings, which is on the left-hand source button, settings in the bottom right, and user interface. Turn gestures off if you don't like it. It can be annoying as you move across the screen. Um, it will change as my phone went flat as we were filming there. But now we're going to continue with the steering wheel control programming. Go back into the settings, user interface. We're going to go steering remote controls. After a couple of seconds, you'll see this button lined up. That means it's detected the plug in the back. Then we're gonna press and hold up on the volume. And we're gonna map these keys to the function. And you got all these different functions, but we're gonna map it, that was volume up. So we're gonna click volume up, press and hold volume down. That will come up, volume down. And we're gonna do track up on these. So we scroll down, track up, track down. Now you can do different functions. If you wanted to make these answer and hang up, or you can do voice, uh, voice recognition for Siri or whatever you need to do if you're going to use it. So the mode button, we're going to use source and click learning complete. Now we'll go back to the home function and we can just test it's working by going to the radio and we can see volume up, volume down, track left. So there you go, down is searching and mode will click through the mode. So everything is complete. Now we want to test the reverse camera as well. So we've got to jump over the other side. We're going to put the foot on the brake, test the reverse camera. Oh, we also had the front camera on this one. So let's go into that here, menu, camera. So there you have the front camera. It is recording and that is more than full HD. I think it's 256p resolution. So really clear picture for the camera. It's gonna be recording as he drives. It's got an eight or 16 gig memory card. Uh, front only, they don't do a rear camera, but uh, there's a lot of settings on that. You can adjust as well if you wanted to, but that's pretty cool and we're quickly going to test the reverse camera so i'm going to flick sides and show you that we are on the driver's side put it in reverse reverse camera works so we're using a SoundSkins vision reverse camera they're hd they're really clear and as you can see there the guidelines are a little bit high so we actually can go into the camera and set those guidelines up while they're on so you'll see the greens way up in the air so we're going to bring that down onto the floor okay so you can actually set them up you can bring them wider, you can do whatever you need to do, but just set them up nice and neat, keep them in line. You can set them how you like. So you can bring these all the way back to the car. And that's nice and neat, okay? So bring that down in line with itself. So with the, the, you can see we're not parked straight, but there you go. Very, very clear, good cameras. That's a SoundSkins Vision camera. We're gonna give those with our units. Um, you can actually buy them off our website as well if you're really interested in that camera. Um, we're gonna put this shroud back on and she looks really good. And the cool thing about these, these are adjustable angles. So if you get a bit of glare, you can always adjust the angle on them. CD, DVD is behind, so they're really, really cool. Um, like I said, these aren't available in the US or the UK, only Australasia and Asia for Kenwood, which is funny enough, I don't know why, because there's a lot of Toyotas overseas. We have shipped these overseas and they will work, the radios will work. Uh, they don't have Sirius radio or uh, for the US or satellite radio, but if you're using Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, you can use all those apps, they're gonna work, the radio is gonna work, the steering wheel control is gonna work, cameras, DVD will be region coded, but again, these have dual USBs which will run MP4 WMV files. So, DVDs, put them in digital media, it's gonna work, not so much of an issue, and you can have this nice widescreen unit. 
So I'm gonna quickly plug the dash in, we'll show you the finished job. Go guys, that's the finished product in this Toyota Camry 2005-2006, the Kenwood DDX 917, and that has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto now, and really a half an hour install.